And it is, is it recording yet? There it is. Okay, so review. Tomorrow's test. 4, 8, 19. Okay, so I'm going to do a lot of my problems just on a separate sheet of paper so you guys can see my work. So number one, I've got square root of 50 m to the fifth. Okay, now, you cannot take the square root of 50. It's really a bad decimal number. But what we can do is find numbers within it that can be squared. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as 25 times 2. I need numbers that have square roots. I need the numbers that are up here. I need these are my special perfect square numbers, right? Now, I want to take half of this, but I can't because I would get a decimal. So I'm going to change it to the square root of m to the fourth and square root of m to the one. Now, I'm not going to get everything out, but I'll get some stuff out. For instance, I can get out a 5, can't I? Because square root of 25 is a 5. I can get out an m to the second because I'm going to take half of the exponent. The 2, I cannot take the square root of. It's just a really bad number, so I'm going to leave it. And I can't take half of this because I would just give me a half. So the 2 and the m stay inside of the square root. But I was able to get some things out. Do you have to add the m to the 1? No, you don't need the 1. You don't need the 1. Yeah. Okay, number 2. Let's look at 2. Okay, number 2. We've got the square root of 20y to the 5th over 9x to the 6th. Okay, when I see this, I'm going to try and break it up into a top part of the fraction and the bottom part, numerator, denominator. Okay, so I'm going to break it up and try and make it a 20y to the fifth over a square root of 9x to the sixth. Okay, now there's some easy stuff right off the bat. So let's get the easy stuff. I can go straight to the square root of 9. Let's get the easy stuff. Square root of 9 is 3. If I get going too fast, tell me to slow down. Okay, go straight to the 9. Square root of 9 is 3. And I can take half my exponent and make that x to the third. Okay, that's the easy stuff, and that's done. Can you move the paper mm -hmm, I sure can, Abby. Now, the 20 is not a good number, but I can break it down and find some good numbers in it. I can find a square root of 4 and the square root of 5 because there is a square root of 4. I can't take half of the 5, so I'm going to take 1 away from it and make it a y4 and a y of the 1. And again, Leon, I don't need the 1, do I? Right? Yeah. Now, from here, I can take the square root of 4 and get a 2. I take half of that and get a y to the 2. So it looks like a mess, but I'm done. I just have to tidy it up. It is finished. So let's see. On the top or in the numerator, I'll have a 2 on the outside and I'll have a y squared. Those two values are outside the square root, but the 5 and the y are still inside. And on the bottom, the denominator, I'll still have a 3x to the third. So I broke it down, found all of the perfect squares that could come out, took out all the perfect squares, and whatever was left stays inside the square root. Okay, how am I doing? Thumbs up? Okay, let's look at number three. Okay, number three is negative 4 squared to 20 plus 2 squared to 5. Okay, you can't add them or subtract them unless they're the same. But I might be able to change the 20 into a number that might make them the same. Well, I'm thinking 4 and 5, right? 4 and 5. So let's go negative 4. I'll change 20 to the square root of 4 and the square root of 5. Yeah, thanks, you guys. Yeah. Okay, so the point I want to do is that I think when I get done fixing this, I should be able to add them. So the square root of 4 is... 2, and that 2 times negative 4 makes a negative 8, square root of 5, okay? Plus my 2 square root of 5, and now because they're the same square roots, I can actually combine them and make a negative 6 square root of 5. I can add them. How am I doing, okay? Right, number four. 
Am I going too fast? No. Five squirts of five times three squirts of five plus three squirts of 25. Okay, when I look at this problem, I'm thinking, I'm thinking distribute, I'm thinking distribute. But wait a minute, wait a minute, there's something really easy I can do. Do you guys see something really easy first? Do you guys see the five? Do you see the five right there? So let's just get the easy stuff done, right? Makes it smaller. So the square root of 25 is five. You guys agree with that? And then three times five is 15. So let's just change this whole thing to 15. So let me rewrite it in a simpler form. Five square root of five times three square root of five plus 15, okay? I mean, that square root of 25 should have been changed to five right off the bat. So let's do it. Okay, now I'm going to distribute. This times this times, and this times this. So I'm going to multiply whole numbers with whole numbers and square root numbers with square root numbers, okay? So whole numbers with whole numbers. I'm going to get 5 times 3 is 15. Yeah, I sure can. Thank you. So whole numbers with whole numbers, 15. And then square root numbers with square root numbers, square root of 25. So I get 15 square root of 25 plus... Now remember, it's whole numbers with whole numbers. Whole numbers with whole numbers. So I'm going to go 5 times 15 is 75. But I still have a square root of 5 that comes along with it. Okay. Now, I see something else. I see something else. I see something easy. I see, I see the square root of 25. You can see the square root of 25. It's just plain old 5, right? And then I can multiply whole number with whole number and get a 15 times 5 is 75. Regular 75 plus 75 square root of 5. I'd like to add these, but I can't because that's the square root of 5. Okay. Not too bad? Okay, turn the page and we'll do number... Oh, yeah, that's it. Number five. Let's do number five on a piece of graph paper, okay? Five. All right, here we go. Number five. Can do graph paper, okay? Y equals X squared minus 2X minus, is it 24? Yeah, minus 24. Okay, let's graph this. So there's two ways. One, we can use a calculator. We can look it on the calculator, which is not bad, but I'm going to go through all of this stuff I'm going to want tomorrow, okay? But you can look at it on the calculator. You guys know how to do that, right? So first of all, zeros. How am I going to find zeros? What are, what are zeros? The x-intercepts. Nice. And to find those, let's set it equal to zero and factor. Okay, nice job, Parker. Okay, so set it equal to zero, and let's factor, okay? All right, factor, parentheses, 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 right? How about a negative six and a positive four? Because that will multiply to make negative 24, but add to make negative two. But those aren't the answers. Those aren't the zeros, because we have our little mini equations, right? So my zeros are really going to be at x equals six, and x equals negative 4, okay? All right, so if I were to graph those, let's see, okay, if I were to graph those, hold on for a second. Um, here, and there. So these are zeros, or like Parker said, Parker's right, they're also x-intercepts, okay? So I'm going to put, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, I'll put an x-intercept at negative 4. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's my other x-intercept, okay? How am I doing? Okay, now, because we're smart, and we are, I know exactly where the line of symmetry is. It's right in the middle, isn't it? Line of symmetry is like, isn't that the line of symmetry right there? Right down the middle is the line of symmetry, okay? So my line of symmetry is at x equals 1. It's got to be. Line of symmetry's got in the middle, right? So then the vertex is got to be somewhere along here. So the vertex, which is the bottom point, the vertex is at 1, 
something. Well, it's got a y value, it's got an x and y value. To get the corresponding y value, let's just plug it in. Let's plug x equals 1 into my equation. y equals a 1 squared minus a 2 times a 1 minus 24. Okay, we're going to plug, all we're doing is plug in the 1 into my original equation, 4x, right? Plug it in here, okay? Put the 1 there and the one there. Okay, so if I use my calculator, I get y equals negative 25. So that's my vertex. Well, that's way down there, right? So I might change my scales. You guys, okay, change my scales. I might go by fives. Negative 10, negative 20, negative 30. So 25 is right about there, okay? And then I pretty much have enough to graph this. So there's my graph. It looks something like this, and I have it. If I need the y-intercept, that's really easy. My y-intercept is right there if I need it, okay? I can listen. Thumbs up. Can you do this? Worst case, worst case, you go to your calculator. You could put it on your calculator, right? Go y equals. And you could say, well, gosh, Mr. Davies, I'm really confused, but I can, I can use my calculator, right? x squared minus 2x. Subtract 24, and I could graph it, OK? All right, six. Here comes the easy stuff, OK? You ready for some easy stuff? Yeah, six is easy. OK, number six. Can you see that? Yeah. So 2x squared minus 7 equals 1. How many answers? Two. two. Make sure you know two answers, right? Two answers, right? OK, let's solve it. Plus 7, plus 7. Does that make sense? Plus 7, plus 7, right? 2x squared equals 8, right? Divide by 2, divide by 2 x squared equals 4, right? Square root, square root. How many answers? Two. So I'm going to say x is equal to plus or minus 2. Because a negative 2 works. If you were to go, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, isn't it? Okay. How am I doing? Doing OK? OK, number 7. Let's see about 7. All right, 7, I have a parentheses. x minus 4 squared minus 1 equals 8. OK, ready? Step 1, let's add 1. Let's go plus 1, plus 1, OK? Let's just go plus 1, plus 1. x minus 4 squared equals 9, right? Square root, square root. Because the square root will cancel the square. Two answers, right? Two answers. So I'm going to go x minus 4 equals 3 and x minus 4 equals negative 3. Okay? Two answers, right? Two answers. I've got the 3 and the negative 3. Okay? Then it gets easy from here. Plus 4, plus 4. You could. Plus 4, plus 4. But what I really want to see, Liam, are these answers. Do you see those? I want to see it like this, because they're real numbers, right? I really don't want to see 4 plus or minus 3, because I'm going to say, well, what is 4 plus or minus 3? You should be able to say, well, Mr. Davies, it's easy. It's 7 and 1, right? OK, how am I doing? Okay, number 8. OK, number 8 is worth 2 points tomorrow. 2 points, because I want complete in squares. One point, show me that you can. And the other point is going to be the answer, OK? Number eight, x squared plus 16x equals 17. OK. All right, we haven't done this for a while, but there's somewhere in your notes. Listen, step one, bring c to the other side. It's been done. Step two, divide by a. There is no a, right? There's no a. Step three, take half of b. What's half of that? And then square it. Do you remember doing that? 
take half of this number and square it. So I get half of 16 is 8, and 8 squared is 64. So now, step 4, add that to both sides. You remember that? So plus 64 plus 64. Add that to both sides. Remember doing that? Okay. Factor. I'm going to factor. So I'm going to factor this. It will factor into an x plus 8 times an x plus 8 equals 81. Okay. I added 64 to both sides, right? This can be rewritten because there's two of them, right? So I can rewrite this as an x plus 8 quantity squared equals 81. Now, to solve it, it's going to be just like the problem we just did. Same kind of problem, right? We're going to go ahead and get rid of the square by square root. So we're going to square root it to get rid of the square. How many answers? Two answers. So we're going to go, all right, I can do this. I'll have an x plus 8 equals 9 and an x plus 8 equals a negative 9. my two answers. Now, let's just solve. Minus 8, minus 8. One answer is 1. Minus 8, minus 8. x equals negative 17. All right? Minus 8, minus 8, minus 8, minus 8. Here's my two answers. Okay? So, one point for completing the square correctly and one point for the right answers. Okay? Can you do that tomorrow? Okay, fair enough. All right, number 9. All right, here's the fun stuff. Seriously, here's the easy stuff. You want to see the easy stuff? Seriously. X squared minus 36 equals 0. Can you factor that? Of course you can. Nope. Yes, you can. What's that factor into? 6x plus 6. Doesn't it? Isn't it just x plus 6? <laughs> x minus 6, right? Isn't that it factored? But that's no, those aren't the answers, but the answers are come from our mini equations, right? So if we had an x plus 6 equals 0 and an x minus 6 equals 0 for our mini equations, right? One answer is negative 6, and the other is the positive 6. Easy. Easiest question on the test. Right there. Okay, 10. x squared minus 2x minus 4, oh, equals 48, okay? I'm ahead of myself. Okay, it says by factoring, so it should factor. So, in order to factor, you must, you must bring it over. Make it equal 0. You have to bring it over make it equal 0. So, I'm going to rewrite this as x squared minus 2x minus 48 equals 0, okay? Okay. Now what? Well, it's factor. It's factor. Okay. How about a negative 8 and a positive 6? Would you agree with that? Okay, because they'll multiply to make negative 48, but they add to make the negative 2, right? If I did my mini equations, x is equal to 8 and x is equal to negative 6. Easy? How's Holly doing? Great. Good. How's Luke doing? Amazing. Good. Okay. <laughs> doing great. Anybody have that? Can I, can I take this away? Yeah. All right. Here we go. This is a long review. You guys got to hang in there. But the idea is to help get you ready for the test. That's why I give such a long review. How long is this? Just like this. Oh, it's just one yeah. page? Yeah. Okay, factor. Well, if it says factor, it should factor, right? So let's check it out, okay? The only way, the only way you can make a 3x squared, the only way you can make a 3x squared is a 3x and an x. The only way you can make a 1 is with a plus 1 and a plus 1, right? Mini equations, okay, you guys good mini equations? And, right? If I solve, I go minus 1, minus 1, 3x equals negative 1, 
divide by 3, divide by 3, negative 1, third. Minus 1, minus 1. Okay, there's my two answers. Alex is going to put that phone away. I know he is. Right? 12. The 12 is, 12 is kind of hard, but I didn't put anything this hard on the test. It's on the review. That's okay. Okay, if it says to factor, it should factor. You ready? All right, where's my smart kids? Where's my kids? Where's my kids that need the challenge? Where's the kids that need the challenge? Okay. All right. Nina got it. If Nina can get it, you can get it. Nina got it. If Nina can get it, you can get it. Factor it. If Nina can get it, you can get it. Okay, what do you think? Owen, you got about you got a minute to get it on. Olivia. Maddie. Tobin. Come on, you guys can get this. Leah. Let's start with a 5x and a 4x. You get that? Let's make a 4 and a 3. What? Check it out. Holly, check it out. You want to see it? 15. See the 15? See a 16? I need a negative 1. What if it was a positive 15, negative 16? What if it was a pa? That, that, might, that might work, huh? That might work. Pause of 15. Yeah. Negative 16 makes that negative. Yeah, I think that's going to work, isn't it? So many equations. And I will not put one this hard on the test. Maybe it's extra credit. One answer is 4 fifths if you solve for x, right? Add the 4, divide by 5. The other is negative 3 fourths if you subtract the 3 and divide by 4. That was a hard one. Okay, here's the easy stuff coming up. Okay, we're getting there. 13. I know. Let's just get this done. It's a lot, isn't it? How many pages? Oh, the test only three. Get okay, ready. Is that I? That is I. Okay, you ready? Seven. Watch. Seven minus a negative. What happens when you subtract a negative? So I get seven plus five is twelve. See the double negative? Plus. And then negative five I. Minus 2i, negative 7i. Now, if you're not sure, watch. If that confuses you, watch. Bring the negative through and make it a positive 5 and a negative 2i if you bring the negative through, okay? 14. Hang in there, you guys. It's a long review, isn't it? Okay, okay turn the page. All right, you do want me to keep doing this, don't you? Yes. Okay, so you got to pay attention. Okay, 14. Okay, before I do 14, write yourself a little note. Okay, I squared equals negative 1. Okay, write that down, write that down. I squared equals negative 1, write that down, okay? Everybody have that? So let's do number 14. I'm going to have a 1 minus 3i times a 4 plus 3i. Okay, you ready? We're going to FOIL. I'm going to multiply it. Ready? 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 3i is a positive 3i. Negative 3i times 4 is a negative 12i. And negative 3i times 3i is a negative 9i squared. Now, I'm going to change the i squared into negative 1, okay? I'm going to combine these two. So I'm going to have a 4 minus 9i minus 9 
times negative 1. Because it turned the i squared into negative 1. Right. So now, almost there. 4 minus 9i plus 9, because a negative times a negative is a positive, right? Almost done. 13 minus 9i, and you cannot add them because you have a real number and an imaginary. Okay, almost done. 15. Do you want me to keep going or do you guys want a break? Let's take a break. I'll pause it. I'll pause the video. We pause it. Come on. <laughs>